This video is part of a series of presentations covering key concepts of virtualization and its applications to cloud computing. This specific presentation provides a high-level overview of how hypervisors work to enable a virtual machine to operate. The motivation for virtualization is for, to enable server consolidation, that is to enable efficient use of hardware. The second feature is desktop virtualization, which enables running multiple operating systems for software development and testing. And the third important motivation for virtualization is security and testing, so that we can test and work with untrusted or malicious software. There are two types of hypervisors. Type 1 hypervisor runs directly on hardware, or also called bare metal. And the primary task of a Type 1 hypervisor is just to run other uh, guest operating systems in virtual machines. A Type 2 hypervisor is just like a normal a program or application that runs on any other desktop operating system. So Type 2 hypervisors can run on Mac, Windows, or Linux. And their job is to create a virtual machine in which guest operating systems can run. Hypervisors are built using modern CPU capabilities that enable effective virtualization. So the CPU provides special hardware instructions that enable development of these hypervisor software. Different companies provide different set of hardware instructions uh, Intel, it's called VTX. Um, on AMD, it's called AMD V. Uh, these are similar instructions, but they are different. That means we are talking at assembly level instructions at this time. And these instructions work in concert with the operating system and the hypervisor to enable creation of virtual machines and running operating systems inside the virtual machines. Hypervisors essentially focus on three key hardware functionality. The first one is to virtualize memory management. Here, the guest virtual memory is suitably mapped and managed by the hypervisor to the actual physical memory of the guest operating system. So here, modern CPUs provide what is called extended memory management unit, which is a hardware module that is utilized by the hypervisors to effectively manage the virtual memory of the guest operating system. The second feature the hypervisor virtualizes is CPU instructions. Here the hypervisor intercepts or handles either privileged instructions or special instructions that may not be available on the native hardware. So here the hypervisor intercepts and handles special CPU instructions. Third, the CPU also enables the hypervisor to manage input-output operations. So the hypervisor is able to intercept uh, input-output instructions, and it can also uh, virtualize any special hardware that you might need because it can intercept these memory operations or I.O. instructions and emulate them on the, on the host operating system. We are going to do a slightly deeper dive into how each one of these three key features are enabled by a hypervisor, but we are going to look at it at a much high level conceptual overview, so we are not going to go into the assembly level details in this presentation. Let's start with virtual memory management. We, it is important to understand how virtual memory basically operates. Keep in mind, most modern operating systems use virtual memory where processes are essentially running in virtual address space. So these are not physical or real address space. Of course, one of these processes could be your Type 2 hypervisor that is running as a regular process, and the Type 2 hypervisor internally runs a guest operating system. Of course, these virtual memory uh, addresses have to be mapped to real memory addresses. That means it goes into physical memory. And this mapping is enabled by CPU's page modular memory management unit, which translates virtual memory in, uh, addresses into physical memory addresses. What the hypervisor does is it works in concert with the guest operating system and the CPU to facilitate this virtual memory management. So whenever a, the guest operating system requires um, some memory to be allocated, 
the hypervisor will intercept that memory request, work with the host operating system, allocate actual physical memory space for it, and make it appear that to the guest operating system that a piece of memory has been available. So every time the guest needs memory, uh, a piece of memory to be allocated, the hypervisor intercepts it, works it with the host operating system to allocate the memory on physical space, and then map it appropriately into the virtual address space of the guest. So to the guest operating system, this operation is completely transparent. It does not know the hypervisor is doing it, but the hypervisor does it so the guest operating system can run uh, effectively in the uh, environment set up by the hypervisor. The hypervisor also sets up the initial memory layout, which will be very similar to the physical machine, so the guest uh, can use this layout to start booting. Uh, most of the hypervisors will also give you a simple BIOS, to, which is the basic input output system that can load the operating system and start booting. So this memory layout, the default memory layout, is also created by the hypervisor as part of the initial startup uh, and booting process of an operating system. The next feature that the hypervisor uh, manages is instruction virtualization. Here, the, typically what will happen is the guest operating system uh, can run different kinds of instructions, and certain types of instructions are considered safe instructions. That means safe instructions are instructions that do not affect the state of the virtual machine. These are typically arithmetic and logic unit instructions. That means you're doing some addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, compare, jump. These kinds of instructions are safe in the sense that they do not affect uh, the devices or memory or sta state of the virtual machine. And the safe instructions are directly executed on the CPU as much as possible to ensure maximum performance for the guest operating system. However, in order to perform input-output operations or to manage or to perform some privileged instructions from the operating system's perspective, there are certain unsafe instructions that have to be executed, and these unsafe instructions are intercepted by the hypervisor and then suitably handled by the hypervisor. So for example, consider the host operating system is running on a physical machine, inside which we are going to run a type 2 hypervisor, also called a virtual uh, machine manager, because it manages a virtual machine, so it's called a virtual machine manager or VMM in some of the terminology but the general terminology being a type 2 hypervisor. Inside the type 2 hypervisor, we are running a guest operating system, which is running inside the virtual machine that has been set up by the hypervisor. So typically, what the host operating system will do is first, it'll have the CPU and it'll schedule it to the hypervisor, which will then run, give the CPU to the guest operating system. And the guest OS will start running on the CPU, executing safe instructions. That means these are instructions that do not affect the overall state of the virtual machine. However, sometimes the guest operating system has to run some privileged instructions on behalf of the application or to perform some operating system tasks. Here, the CPU will generate what is known as a trap or an exception. Trap is just a hardware exception. So this trap or hardware exception is then intercepted and handled by the hypervisor to perform whatever operation that's required to manage that unsafe instruction. So the hypervisor handles the unsafe instructions and then returns the control back to the guest operating system. And this process will constantly happen as the guest operating system tries to run running different types of instructions. And this repeated operation where you the guest operating system runs an unsafe instruction, you have to have a virtual memory enter or a virtual memory exit where you're entering the virtual machine and exiting the virtual machine state. And this constant switching back and forth is a little bit of an overhead that exists when you're running with hypervisors. Modern hypervisors are pretty good where they've reduced this overhead substantially, but still a little bit of overhead does exist because of managing this VM entry and VM exit traps generated by the CPU to run unsafe instructions. Now let's look at I.O. or input-output virtualizations. And here input-output operations are managed similar to how instruction virtualization is done. Here normally the guest uh, operating system is running, performing some CPU operations, so the CPU is being used. Uh, periodically, 
the program might want to perform some input output, reading or writing in console, reading or writing from keyboard, so on and so forth. And here, the CPU will encounter an input output instruction that it does not handle or it's not supposed to handle because the hypervisor has set up that exception that way. And the CPU generates a trap or an exception. This exception or trap is intercepted by the hypervisor. And along with the exception, you have additional information about what type of instruction was attempted by the guest operating system. And the hypervisor uses this information to determine what type of operation needs to be performed. It then interacts with the host operating system to actually perform the input-output operation. This might involve emulating some kind of a hardware, which then becomes a simple file on the uh, host operating system. So the hypervisor appropriately manages the hardware device. And once that uh, input-output operation is done, the hypervisor will give the CPU back to the guest operating system, and the guest operating system will continue to run instructions. So summarizing what we reviewed in this presentation, uh, modern hypervisors are enabled and facilitated via special instructions in the CPU. Different manufacturers provide different approaches for virtualization, but conceptually they are all similar or comparable. These concepts apply to both type 1 and type 2 hypervisors, more or less, just that these two hypervisors do slightly different operations or interactions um, when the different exception scenarios occur. Hypervisors use CPU support to, one, virtualize memory management so that the guest operating system, to the guest operating system, appears like it's working on a physical hardware, while the hypervisor manages the memory associated with the guest operating system. Second, it intercepts and handles any special or unsafe instructions that the guest operating system might uh, want to run. And this interception of special or unsafe instructions is facilitated by the CPU. And the uh, hypervisor uses those special CPU instructions to intercept uh, instructions from the guest operating system. And third, hypervisors also intercept and manage input-output operations. So anytime there's an input-output operation by the uh, guest operating system, the hypervisor intercepts it and translates it uh, to appropriate operations on the host operating system. So these three collectively enable or the core features of a virtual machine. And this is how hypervisors work on modern hardware to set up and run different kinds of virtual machines.